Hello, welcome to the studio. I'm Linda Kempshaw. Today I wanted to show you how I've been making these little panels um, using a range of Madeira threads and my embellishing machine. Now I'm working onto a felt base for this and you could just buy a piece of commercial felt uh, but I prefer to kind of customize and create my own. So let me show you how I do that. Now I start by working onto a base of, this is a really inexpensive synthetic felt. And the color doesn't matter too much because I'm actually going to cover the whole thing. But what is important is to bear in mind how you're going to frame it uh, because that aperture there is the size of work that we need to create. So, you know, if you're buying a frame, first of all, take the cardboard mount out and then with a soft pencil, I've used a chalky pencil here, draw within the aperture just to give you a working kind of size to work to. Now, the felting process does shrink all of that material, so it's a good idea to make it, you know, probably an inch larger than you think you'll need on all sides. So you can see I've done that and worked onto this um, black square of fabric. So I've got a whole range of woolen tops to work with now. If you're not familiar with these, um, these are merino wool and you can see they're just loose fibres and it's kind of like an artist would paint. I've got a whole range of colours and what I'm going to do is tease them out to create my basic landscape. So I want to suggest that we've got a sky up at the top here um, and I've got some fibres here, very pale almost white and I'm just going to loosen them so they're soft and I'm going to position them. You can see you can just kind of pull them apart and just manipulate the effect. You don't have to go for a bright blue sky but if you want to introduce a little bit of blue you can again take little wisps of these fibers, lay them down the beauty of this technique is you can keep building on the layers. So we can start with that um, and we can add to it if we want to. Now in my little landscapes, I'm working very small scale so I have to bear that in mind, but I want to suggest in the horizon, at the horizon, that I've got some sort of shrubbery or tree type line. So I'm going to go for something a little bit dark and position that down here. And then I find that what works for me is to work sort of till the, the brighter, warmer colors, the advancing colors come nearer to me at the front. So we will have some green in there because I'm going to have some floral detail, but I'm going to go for this really bright sort of limey green put some of that in and then oh here's a nice one this to me I'm going to do a poppy field so this suggests to me that sort of strawy color that you might get within a poppy field so just loosen those fibers and I'll decide I think it might be good to put those in the middle area and then have the limey the brighter color down here at the front now that's enough for me to make a start with the needle felting. If you don't have a needle punch machine or sometimes they're known as the embellishing machine which does make very short work of this um, you can do this by hand with a handheld needle felting tool and you see those at all of the craft shows. So let's do, just bring in my machine. Now if you're not familiar with the whole technique the needle felting machine has multiple needles. This particular brand has five, but it doesn't have any eyes, so hence there's no thread. And the action is to simply push the fibers down through. So my loose merino fibers will be pushed and meshed with the base layer of the synthetic felt. Now, when you've made a start with the felting process, you can see if there are any gaps and you can tease out little bits more of your tops to just fill those gaps until you've got the depth of color and a nice even layer. So I can just go and add it in and off we go again. Now 
Now I've got the basic colours down, but I think because this is going to be a poppy field, it might be nice to have a tiny little drift of red fibres running through the middle that I'm going to embroider over later. I think that's probably okay but one way to check it is to flip to the reverse and if you can see the colours of all of your fibres showing on the back of the felt then you know that you've sufficiently felted those fibres through. So I'm ready now for the embroidery and what I've chosen are Madeira Katona 30 weight threads and what I've gone for is something in my colour palette so I've got that dark burgundy colour here I've got a nice fresh leafy green to use for some stalks and then I've got this honey colour that I think will suggest it would go really well with that um, warm fibre that I've used here and suggest sort of straw type stalks. So I'm just going to thread up on an ordinary sewing machine and it's set up for free motion stitching. So I've got the darning foot on and the feed dog's dropped. What I'm going to do is try and suggest that over a little swathe of colour that I've got some undergrowth or some kind of trees and, and bushes happening. So I bring the thread, the bobbin thread, to the top, hold both threads in my hand and then I'm just going to, it's like I'm drawing with the needle. just simple tree shapes and you can see I'm extending the line of stitch into the sky area so we can see that silhouette of the branches more clearly um, and when I come back on myself down the trunk of the tree they'll travel along the horizon line and do the next tree and I'm just going to do that across the whole of that horizon strip on my piece of felt. <laughs> Now I find that Katona 30 works beautifully for this. It's thick enough to make a nice bold mark and it's got a matte finish. Now if you preferred to have something a bit shinier, a bit more lustrous, you could use one of the Madeira rayon threads and I often mix and match. But for this particular piece, I think a matte surface works very nicely, complements the fibres of the felting. Um, and when I've completed the free motion machine stitching, I'm then going to bring in some hand stitch. Uh, so I'll just change my thread colour now because I'm going to work further down the foreground area and I'm going to suggest those stalky shapes. So I've switched to another of the Madeira Katona 30s, this time a golden yellowy colour and I'm just going to bring the bobbin thread up again and here I'm just going to do back and forth little straight lines to sort of suggest stalks. Imagine a cornfield. much of this free motion stitching as you like. I'm going to leave it at that for the time being because I'm ready now to add some hand embroidered detail. Right, for my hand work now, I'm going to work with Madeira Lana. It's a perfect thread for this sort of project. It's 50% wool, 50% acrylic. So it's got that woolly quality to it that's going to bed really perfectly into my felted landscape. And I've selected a few colours here that suit my palette. Um, it comes in a wide range of colours, including some variegated. So we've got solid colours and variegated. Uh, I'll, I'm going to just go first of all with the one of the golden coloured threads, this one. Um, I've threaded up uh, a needle with a large eye and a point. So it's um, a chenille needle, looks like a cruel needle but this has got a point rather than a chenille needle which is blunt. And I'm simply going to knot the end of my thread 
because nobody's going to see the work on the back. Now the two rows of machine stitching that I've done here are meant to look like some sort of grain. So I'm just going to bring the needle up and I'm going to create a little sort of V shape at the top of each stalk. It's a fly stitch, you see, and you can take the needle down again, pull that taut and you've got that little, sort of like a little seed head appearing. And you'll notice when I did the free machine stitching with the Katona 30 that I varied the direction of my stalks and I varied the length because in nature they would not be completely regular. So you can choose at this point if you do one of these little V-shapes on top of every stalk, whether you use the same colour throughout or whether you introduce slightly different colours. I think that caps off that little line of stitching really quite nicely and if I bob down to my second line here you can see we're going to get this nice little scattering of seed heads. Now when your thread end gets too short to use anymore, just take the final stitch to the back of the work and because you've got this felty, quite thick surface, you'll find you can just do a little back stitch. And I try to split the thread, so I know it's not going to come undone, and then simply snip it off, re-thread and continue. Now as you can see, I've not finished the whole of that uh, stitching yet but I'm switching to my red thread because I want to put a little drift of poppies through here and um, I bring the needle through to the right side of the work and to make those little flower shapes I'm going to use a French knot so I simply take the thread in my left hand wrap it round the needle four or five times take it back down almost where it came through just beside where it came through Hold it taut with that thumbnail and pull. And you see you get that nice little, it's almost like a little tiny rosebud shape. But if I put drifts of these little red dots right the way across, they're just going to look like a, a field of poppies. Now it's coming along nicely, um, but I've still got a fair bit of stitching to do. And there are no hard and fast rules. You can do as much embroidery as you like on this. You can combine machine with hand. You could do it all by hand if you prefer. But I'm going to really enjoy putting some stalks in for my poppies, lots more poppies across the centre there, and maybe a little drift of them in the, in, at the foreground. But it looks really untidy at this point. And what I'd recommend that you do is to take the mount that you used before to create the size and shape on the base and just keep auditioning what you've created so far and decide, you know, how much sky are you going to show, how much foreground, this sort of grass area. You can look and you can focus all of your attention on the stitching that you're doing now. Um, and that's given me an idea. I think it's balancing really quite nicely and I'll just carry on now and get on with it. So what do you think? I think I've done enough. I've got enough detail on that now and it's ready to actually display it. So I don't need all of this background of felt. So if I just flip it over, I can see where my working area is and I'm just going to reduce a lot of that bulkiness. It has distorted the felt a little bit, all of this um, machine stitch and the actual needle punching process. So I'll cut some of that wobbly felt off. And then all I have to do is to double check where I want it to be placed. Position it about there. Come to this side, it's very roughly cut, but it doesn't matter, it's not going to be shown. And I'm going to use just a bit of masking tape, you could use double sided tape, but I'm going to tape it slightly under tension. So if I just put the tape to my felt and then pull slightly before I press that edge down. 
it'll just keep it nice and taut so we haven't got any wrinkles showing on the other side. I'll do that for all four corners. And there we have it. So it's ready at that point to pop into the frame. And pop the backboard in. And there we have it. So just as a recap, I've used merino wool fibres, the woolen tops, to customise my felt background. And I've worked into them with Katona 30, the uh, cotton threads of that 30 weight. And then I've done a lot of the hand detail with the Lana, Madeira Lana threads and mix those colours up a little bit. So I think it's made quite an attractive panel. And what I have to warn you is it gets a little bit addictive. So, you know, why stop at one when you can just keep, keep going? <laughs> so I've got um, a nice little group of these now. I've got four here uh, and one still to be mounted. So. Um, I've had fun as you can tell. I hope you'll have a go at that and you'll enjoy using your threads too. So bye for now.